Hello everyone, Flash Notion here, and I'm a little bit late, but I am now finally here to react to, uh, what, what the fuck is this? What, what am I watching here? Get, get, get the young audience out quick. I say, I, I swear here. Um, <laughs> so, right, we are watching season nine of My Little Pony, episode 11, Student Council. And, uh, yeah, I'm guessing, you know, some, uh, might see some of the student six, but the thumbnail is showing me Starlight and Trixie. So, I mean, Starlight is the counselor. That makes sense. But, uh, I mean, Star Trek's episode. Yay? I mean, they have a pretty decent track record with those. We haven't really gotten one this season, but going back to, uh, season eight, uh, I mean... Starlight's been a pretty decent part all around, but the road to friendship was freaking hilariously awesome. Um, <laughs> and, uh, huh. Was it, wait, was that the only Starlight and Trixie episode in season eight? I thought there was another one. There were a couple of other Starlight ones, the parent map, and, uh, uh, oh shit. Uh,. Oh, right, uh, Matter of Principles. <laughs> I was going to say, I, thought, I knew there was another one. All right, um, huh, but only three real Starlight episodes. I guess the Student Six did take up a bunch of time there. So, but yeah, and one of them was a Starlight and Trixie one. And then, of course, in Season 7, we had to change the Changeling, which was absolutely amazing. Uh, all balled up. Hilarious. <laughs> so... Yeah, just Starlight and Trixie is a great combination. We knew, We all know this. We all, like, 90% of the fandom, I think, ships the two of them together. So, <laughs> I really don't think it's, uh... <laughs> I, I, I think that this this has the potential to be a great episode. I mean, we've had a good couple of them. Um, unfortunately, I noticed that not a lot of people really liked last week's episode, Going to Seed. A lot of people uh, didn't really seem to pick up on what, what the episode was talking about, which is... Pretty unfortunate, so I'll just reiterate, just in case anybody didn't stick around for uh, my talk after that, but essentially what the episode was going for was a lesson of, no matter how old you get, you can still act like a little kid sometimes. You can still play with toys or watch silly shows like this, and it's important to have that message right now in Season 9, because this is the final season, and kids who started watching back in Season 1, or you know, shortly thereafter, have all grown up at this point and are graduating high school, going off to college, tr about to become adults, which is normally at the point in time where their ability to actually have fun just kind of dies. And that didn't happen to me, but I'm one of the lucky ones in that sense. I mean, hell, just... Yeah, so it, 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 it's a good thing to have that lesson there. Uh, so, yeah, in my opinion, fantastic episode. It, it it takes a little while to, you know, like, you have to kind of let go of this, this sense of, like, well, where is this episode going? You just have to, like, sit back and enjoy the ride for a little while. And then you get to the end and you're just like, oh, I see what you did there. And, yeah, it becomes a great episode. And, of course, Sweet and Smoky, mm, I, I like that one. Not a lot of... A, some of the people were a little bit hesitant about Garble. And they rightly pointed out that uh, he... Um, <laughs> he he did, uh, at one point, seemingly try to kill Twilight and Rarity. Threatened to burn Equestria and other bad things. Um, I could go into a lot of detail about how that's all just excuses. Uh, instead, I'm just going to go for the fa simple fact of he never actually committed anything that, or any act that is completely unforgivable. Even dropping Spike off from that ledge right there, Spike probably would have survived. I'm just going to go on and say it. Dragons are tough. Um, but, yeah, I mean, <laughs> he, uh, he, he never actually committed any act heinous enough that he isn't able to get forgiveness. Uh, before that, of course, we had Frenemies. That was amazing. She's All Yak was fine. I didn't particularly like that episode, but objectively, it wasn't bad. Uh, Common Ground, I loved that one. And yeah, you have to go all the way back to the point of no return to find an episode that I didn't 
really like all that much. That one was fine, it just wasn't good. <laughs> so yeah, uh, high expectations for this episode to keep up the trend of season 9 being great. And uh, yeah, to keep up the trend of great Star Trek episodes. Or Starksy. What, what what the fuck are we calling this this ship? I don't know. Yeah, let's uh let's watch that episode. And right off the bat, though, something that strikes me is that we're I'm looking at uh, some of the landscape in Ponyville, and there's these swirls in the ground that very much remind me of the whole great seedling thing. Makes me think that uh, maybe it is real. <laughs> I don't know. Let's let's watch the fucking episode already. <laughs> Starting in three. Two, one, play. Hey, there you are. So I figured you could use a break. Aww. <gasps> Trixie, this looks amazing, but my job doesn't really seem like work. No. Yeah. Um, a fucking smartwatch. Tika, Tika, Tika. for the students at Twilight School of Friendship is demanded. Did she have to take a moment to, uh... One sec. Wow. <laughs> also, uh, this is gonna be some good headcanon for, uh... All right. A fanfic. Able to use the experiences of my checkered past to help young students feels pretty great. I imagine it usually would. Mm, when was the last time you had lunch, Starlight? Admiration for the work you do, but it is a little all-consuming, and I miss spending time with you. Aww. About, we're spending time right now. Well. Hold on, thought. Like uh, somebody's significant oh, other sorry. answering a cell phone during dinner. My office, so this bracelet goes off whenever there's a knock. Aww. The worst time with her braids lately. Wow. Anyway, you were saying? My God! <laughs> Angry Trixie is the best. Oh my God! So yeah, different kind of a uh, lower spat here going on. Oh my God! They could not telegraph it anymore with this couple. They couldn't. They couldn't. And I suddenly just realized something that uh, me and a friend were talking about earlier. Yes, I actually have a friend now. Holy crap. And they like ponies too, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, we were discussing something earlier. And uh, they mentioned uh, about a, a lesbian couple. And I was just like, wait, there's no official lesbian couple on the show. And, I, and now I remember. Duh, Star Trek's probably. I respect my younger cousin's decisions to stay sea ponies. But they've never been on dry land. Aw. Josh Haber. Okay. Wow. So far, I've got warm and steamy. Actually, steam has water in it. Silverstream. There are a lot of students who want to see me today. I just need a few shower adjectives that don't rely on the wet part. Why don't you go see Cheerilee? She has an actual school. Okay, well, I'm here to help. My door's always open. Not really. Except for today, of course. Um, Trixie? If we leave now, we can finish everything before sundown. Trixie, I can't leave. I mean, it's she has break. to... Really? They get a spring break. <laughs> and she has a candy platter. <laughs> Wait, what? With any issues before they head home for the holiday. <laughs> Nice to see that in action. <laughs> I know you're Fuck off. <laughs> okay, this spring My god. The party Mod and Mudbriar are throwing. Oh! Sunburst is coming to town. Wow! She has been really. I promise to make the cake. Um. How could I possibly forget about that? I wonder how. <laughs> oh my god I'm sorry that was too much but jeez are those new saddlebags they look like a new design 
I need to be available to my students, but that's not 24 7 and you can uh, come up with someone else to cover your duties for you for a little while. Also, take off the damn bracelet, even though it's cute. Get the damn cake. Mod needs streamers for the decorations. Sunburst wants us to pick up a genuine pre equestrian spring solstice chafing dish from the antique shop. Of course he does. <laughs> okay, ask Twilight to do the other do that one. Pinky for the first one. Looking forward to Mrs. Cake teaching us the secret recipe to her famous. Oh. Oh. Wow, that face. But we could just buy a cake from her, right? <laughs> but then we'd miss out on baking together. Plus the time I spent flattering and convincing and begging her to share the recipe would be for nothing. And we promised to make a cake, not buy a cake, and the great and powerful Torexie keeps our promises. Okay. Why don't we just justified jobs? Anger the streamers and the chafing dish, you get started on those sticks and I'll be right back. No, Starlight. <laughs> you know, why don't I just hang on to this? Wouldn't want to forget the things I just said I'd take care of. Because I am totally gonna <sighs> This is definitely an adult problem. <laughs> oh my god. It's adorable. It plum blossom? I have no idea. <laughs> Oops. <sighs> Sorry, Rose, but I okay a flowering sticks set. I thought I was getting the flowering sticks. Still not exactly sure what they are. No one is. What? Right, got it. You get the sticks, I'll get the streamers. Right after I take care of what I'm sure is an even smaller student problem than the last one. Ah. Aww. Aww. <laughs> that is ridiculously cute, and I'm I thinking that one's gonna go on my thumbnail. But I can't figure out how to Seriously, send her to Cheerily! Aww. I mean, um, <laughs> that's amazing. I picked up Sunburst genuine pre equestrian equinox chafing dish. That was my job. I think. Wait, was it? Oh my god. She's done everything by now, hasn't she? Wow. Aww. Normal for a changeling to struggle with identity issues, but Counselor Starlight. Really? When you're done, I need some synonyms for the word dry. Or really just help explaining the concept. There is no water. Simple as that. Wait, Mrs. Cake! You can't close. Trixie and I need to learn the recipe for your equinox cake. Oh, it's fine, dear. Trixie was already here. I told her Aww. everything she needs to know. What? No! Great and powerful Trixie might keep her promises, but the busy and distracted Starlight sure doesn't. I if Mrs. Cake gives her marriage advice, thing. I'm gonna die. Oh, that does sound hard, dear. And, and I'm not quite sure how to tell you this, but your off is glowing. Of course it is. Okay, no advice from her, but still. Oh, God! That's creepy. Aww. So sorry about today. I'm just so busy. I know. They need counseling. Your students are more important than your friends. That's not. Just say wife already, Stop or at least wife food. No, go to Cheerily. Actually, Silverstream, I don't. Besides, I need to lock up the school for the holiday, and it's time you caught the train home. I'm sure a smart and capable student like you can figure out the solution to any problem over the break. But for now, the counselor's office is closed. Well, damn. I mean, you could have worded that a little better and more, like, nicely. But still. Hey. Back to, uh. Yeah. Is this cake supposed to be so sharp? I mean, it looks really interesting. It does look nice. Technically. It's not symmetrical or aesthetically pleasing. Maybe it's not the best cake, but we made it together, and that's what counts. Aww. I'm glad you brought it, and everything else. I mean, I'm very excited. This is going to be the most perfect. Party I'm glad Mudbriar is back, and but with all of your students, 
home for the holiday, I won't have to worry about Who's summoned to your office in the middle of it. Going to be mm -hmm. nothing is gonna take me away from this party. Hello, Starlight? What the fuck? Starlight? Um Terramar? Sorry, this is a private cavern. <laughs> Is Starlight here? I was told she'd be here. What's wrong? I'm Terramar. So yeah, what the fuck are you doing here? Looking all over for you. Silverstream is missing. <gasps> Trace is just like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't understand. Silverstream didn't come home? Mm -mm. I was supposed to meet her at the Mount Eris train station, but she never showed up. She's it's a long way still Ponyville and Mount here, Paris. isn't she? Anywhere. Trying to figure out, uh... Teams of hippogriffs and sea ponies searching the land and sea between here and our home. They hmm. sent me to check the school. But the school's closed. All the students are gone. Are you sure? I know she's anybody... project due for Twilight. Do you think she might have stayed to finish it? She never told me about a project. Well, to be fair, you closed your office the last time she came by. Really? Huh? <laughs> what kind of counselor turns away a student with a problem? The kind with too much on her plate. Starlight has always gone out of her way for her students. And I mean always. Seriously. Except apparently when it matters. So I'm pretty sure that it's Silverstream's fault for not emphasizing the fact that that was a project. Not just a thing that she's trying to do for herself. Also, hi Terramar. I should have known it couldn't last. Party perfection is more of a pinky thing. Eh. Mm, I wasn't going to say anything. But these flowers are just glued on, so technically... It wasn't perfect already. But that's probably not important. <laughs> oh my god. You check the grounds and I'll look at A hey, uh Silverstream? <laughs> I need a fic with Trixie and Mudbriar now. Hello. With her dealing with all like getting him to act more or less normally. <laughs> Any creature? Hmm. Not down here. Why would she be down there? <laughs> Did you check her room? Duh! I would have been the first place to check. Hmm. Well, well somebody was there recently. Here. No, she isn't. But look at this. A cockatrice? Could that be what her project was on? Um. You don't think she went into the Everfree Forest to find a cockatrice by herself? Do you? Why the fuck would she do that? Also, the last time we saw the cockatrice was in uh, Tartarus. So, um. <laughs> forgot to bring him along with you. Nice. Oh. What are you all doing here? We came to help. We couldn't let you handle this alone. I mean, it's just. Technically, she wasn't alone. One. But we wanted to help anyway. Wow. Thanks. All of so, Pinky's the only one who can't stand him. <laughs> Well, maybe some of the uh, people watching, but I might share a bit of the blame for pressuring you into leaving work early. But I don't want to ruin your party. We can still have a party, a search party. <laughs> oh, Maud! <laughs> God. We think she went into research on cockatrices. What? The gaze of the cockatrice is known to petrify any who dare to cross its path. Yes, and we know that. Reptilian birds are elusive and solitary. Where would we even start? I have a lot of experience telling ponies that I have experience with the dangerous creatures of the Wow. Follow me. I mean, the fuck? <laughs> I have a lot of experience telling people I have a lot of experience. Also, is it just me or is this a kind of similar to... The season one opener. There are six of them. Although one of them isn't a pony. And three of them are unicorns, so it doesn't really work out. This way. Trixie, you don't have a fucking clue, do you? Not a fucking clue. Uh, please stop. Aw. <laughs> please tell me that Zakora comes out of nowhere here. Trixie. 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 No. Just stop. Oh! <coughs> and 
And back at that. Weren't we just here? Like five times. Do you have any idea how to find a cockatrice? No. But usually, when there's a dangerous creature in the forest I don't want to meet, this is how I meet them. We might need a more concrete plan. Yeah. Suit yourself. I mean, According kind to of a nice research, way to do it. Cockatrice prefers rocky terrain and ample shade. Rocks and shade. Hmm. I can't imagine where we'll find that in a forest. Actually, rocks aren't the most hospitable environment for shade trees. Technically, pine trees like Pinus Cambra or Pinus Sylvestris can grow from narrow crevasses or cracks in a rocky rhizosphere. You completely. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Seriously. Uh, that's a lot of cockatrices. Why are there so many cockatrices? I thought you said they were solitary. They are. Wait. This must be some kind of migration. Ugh. At least there's no sign of silver stream. Did Grogar make all of these? Block. It's just lucky we're all over here and they're all over there. You were saying, don't look. Technically, don't even say it. Whatever you do, don't look at them. Their gaze can turn you to stone. So what do we do? Run! Yeah. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> wow. Oh. And his horn was even bent there. Damn. Starlight. I'm so sorry. We have to get out of here. It's actually a pretty powerful magic burst. Stay. We can't leave. Silverstream might still be in the forest. Stay here. I'll get the others. Be careful! Not that she can hear you, unless there's a teleport, like, after Scar. Good job, Trixie. Come on. Really nice job, Trixie. Wow, Maud. Maud, we've got to get out of here. I'm not leaving him. Oh. Aw. Poor him. Go get Flyer Shy. I didn't think I could love him anymore. Oh my god. <laughs> really? That is disturbing. He's been petrified and oh my god. Careful not to make, let him smack his head on any branches. Hmm. Seriously, go get Fluttershy. She can... Ah, Sanctuary! Of course that's where Silverstream would have gone. She would have gone to the Sanctuary. They can just come around. Let's hope Silverstream found a good place to hide. There could be hundreds more cockatrices on the way. If this really is a migration, it'll take a full lunar cycle to complete. Oh, I have to get word back to our parents that Silverstream could be surrounded by those terrifying birds. And as handsome as Mudbriar is now, we good lord, each one of them to turn him back to normal. Ugh, this could is all my it, could you get Ocellus to turn into one and then turn him back? Duties again. That seems a little extreme. Really? If I hadn't galloped off to a holiday celebration, Silverstream would be safe with her family, and you'd all be enjoying Maud's party. Eh. Instead, my student is missing, we're surrounded by a flock of petrifying chicken snakes, <laughs> and Maud's boyfriend was turned into a hunk of rock! Emphasis on hunk. <laughs> oh my god! And to top it off, <laughs> that little smile, too. Here? Has that always been there? What? Oh, that's the student's tree house. Apparently it grew from the tree of harmony and <gasps> Duh. Of course. That should have been the first place we looked. Probably. Mod's just like, I'm just gonna stay here with him. What are you gonna do to him in this state, Mod? Also, is he aware? I think he is. Oh, we're seeing the inside. So
she befriended one? This is Edith. She's helping me with my project. The fuck? I don't understand. After oh. encouraged me to solve my own problem, I decided to get my project done before I left. That way I could really focus on my family during my visit. Oh. So I came here. Why didn't you tell anyone? Mom and Dad are worried sick. Yeah, that's your fault. No, I'm so sorry. Once Edith volunteered to help, I guess I lost track of time. Cockatrices are really friendly if you know how to interact with them. Um. Okay. I can't believe you figured out how to trigger her nesting response. They are really fascinating creatures. Did you know that they migrate to the Everfree Forest once a year? Can you imagine what would happen if you stumbled on a whole flock of these? I have a few ideas. Yeah. <gasps> I'm sorry you got so to Edith me. turned her back. Turned her back. Edith was able to turn you back. How do you tell the difference? Ouch. I have mixed feelings about it. <laughs> Technically, I will wow. always be a stick pony. But the experience has given me an even deeper appreciation for the density and permanence of rock. Wow. Swoon. Everything you did to help find Oh my god. I just wish I hadn't abandoned her in the first place. Starlight, you didn't abandon her. I might as well have. Maybe I mean, it turned out all right. Things could have been a lot worse. You can't be expected to supervise your students every second of every day. I'm not so sure. Mm. I like that you're always available, but it kind of makes it okay to come to you with stuff that maybe isn't super important. Yeah. Of course, being a school counselor is a big responsibility, but always being at work isn't fair to any pony, hmm. especially me. Do you think if I had wow. set times to see me, it might help you decide what you really need to talk about? To be honest, you really weren't very helpful with the other stuff anyway. Wow. Wait, what? Happy <laughs> like, I'll have you know. Petrified dessert? You had me at petrified. Jesus. Oh my god, okay. Well, that was enjoyable. <laughs> Seriously, the... No main six, and I loved it. Mm. <laughs> it was kind of ridiculous, um, but in a good way. Like, it didn't really go anywhere, did it? Not that much. Um, so, yeah, what kind of lesson to take away from that? Just don't let your work consume your life. Which, another good episode, or another good lesson to give to kids just going out into adulthood. And some of them are going to go directly into the workforce. So, yeah, definitely a good thing to remind them of what's really important. Like, yeah, the world places a lot of emphasis on getting it, or at least in the United States it does, on getting a job and providing for yourself, your family, whatever. And you're expected to do it pretty much right out of high school or unless you go into college or the military or whatever. Because... America is fucked. <laughs> but, in this case, uh, yeah, just making a, making good on the idea of uh, don't, don't put all of your time into work. You have to have personal time. You have to have time away, which can be hard. Like, really hard. A lot of the jobs, especially the ones that hire young people, they're, they exploit you. Completely and utterly. They want you on call 24-7 to be their bitch. And I... I hate that idea. <laughs> One of the reasons why I have difficulty getting a job right now is because I absolutely refuse to take a job like that. I am going to have set hours that I work. And I'm not I'm not going to be one of those... I'm not, I'm not going to be... The guy that a gas station calls in at midnight because somebody skipped out on their shift. Like, no, fuck that. <laughs> like, I, I I understand why they do it, but that doesn't make it right, and it doesn't mean that I have to subject myself to that. Now, if everybody took that attitude, I mean, well, at that point we'd probably have more unions, and at that point, you know, the, they wouldn't be able to do that. They wouldn't be allowed to do that. Um, so yeah, I mean, everybody should do that, <laughs> but, um, 
no, it's it's just a good lesson to give kids. You know, as you go forward in life, continue to make time for your family and your loved ones and just everybody in your life. Um, and yeah, just very much playing up the fact that Starlight and Trixie are basically a couple. They they really are because this is an argument that a couple would have. Yeah, you know? and usually it's um, usually in fiction it's the male who is uh, obsessed with work and is. Uh, putting too much time if into his work and not making enough time for his family. And a lot of times in fiction, that leads to uh, divorce. I say in fiction, I mean it would lead to divorce in reality. But in terms of um, the way that... Uh... God, what am I saying here? <laughs> uh... In terms of the way that this would... Uh, god damn it! I I fucking don't know what I'm saying here. Okay. Um. Yeah, just just in general, it's a pretty good um lesson. I I need a moment here. Okay, took care of that thing that was bugging me. Uh, so where was I? Um. I was just talking about how it was a good lesson. Okay, so other things in this episode, because there were actually quite a few things in this episode that were enjoyable. Um, Cockatrice is coming back. Always nice to see that. Uh, consistency of creatures. And, yeah, they come into the Everfree Forest every once in a while. Edith. The good Cockatrice. Uh, so, not really a pet, but Silverstream has a friend that is very dangerous. I mean, Trixie has worked with a manticore before, so... How did that work out? I mean, that is a really good question. Like, where the hell did Trixie get that manticore that she used for the... for that one episode? Like, did she just go into the Everfree Forest, find them, stumble across the manticore, and get it to agree to appear in her shows, or what? And where where does it stay when it's not helping her out with the shows? Was it just for that one show? Did she contract... Fluttershy for it? What the hell? I don't know. Inconsistency regarding Trixie is, at this point, normal. <laughs> um, and Trixie herself was a delight this episode. Just utterly scorned and just angry. and But in the good way. Like, not in the way of, like, she's unreasonably angry. Like, or in the bad way of being unreasonably angry. But, like, no, she has a point. She has a reason to be angry. And she's angry. And it's hilarious. And I love... I love seeing it. Uh... <laughs> the, uh... Yeah. What? I forgot what I was saying. Right, so... Yeah, Trixie Trixie was great. And so was Maud. Maud, I think, kind of stole the show a little bit. Um... Towards the end there. <laughs> Just her utter lust for Mudbriar in his rock form was so wrong, but so hilarious. And, I mean, just in general, the way that Maud acted in the episode was hilarious and well worth having her in this episode. I mean, just, that was fantastic. Um, great to see Terramar again. I really do, do like seeing him again. He's uh, he's pretty nice and pretty cool. We only really had the one episode with him. And, yeah, glad they brought him back. <laughs> wonder uh, wonder if he would get along with uh, Garble at all, maybe. They both seem kind of uh, a little bit chill out in their natural habitats there. Like, once we got to know Garble in poetry form there. <laughs> Get a group together of all the brother characters. Uh, so, oh, invite them both to Guy's Night. That's what they could do. Play ogres, Get together and play Ogres and Oubliettes. That would be great. So you have, and, well, I was going to say all the brothers would mean Zephyr Breeze, but, like, I don't know if he would necessarily fit in with Ogres and Oubliettes. I feel like he's the kind of guy that would make a Mary Sue or Gary Stew or whatever type character and just totally derail the plot because he's making everything about his character and trying to make them god tier and just... Yeah. 
Yeah, that would be frustrating. Spike would probably be pulling his eyeballs out at that. Being the... Well, no, Discord's the, the game master, isn't he? Anyways. Um, and then we had Silverstream. Who was honestly kind of a little bit frustrating. Because, yeah, she was going to Starlight for trivial issues. Which... The episode kind of tried to make it seem like it was a little bit of star its fault about that, but not really. I mean, the part where she didn't immediately say to, to uh, Silverstream, go see Miss Cheerilee, she's like a real teacher who would know this kind of crap. Like, that's on Starlight. <laughs> um, Silverstream choosing to come to Starlight with her, you know, things that she should be going to other teachers for, that's, uh, that's on Silverstream. And Silverstream's stupidity at not sending a note home, that's on Silverstream as well. Uh, Admittedly, however, I'm not going to be too harsh on her for that because I've done stupid shit like that and not told anybody and gotten in trouble for it later. And it's just like, I didn't think of that. I'm sorry. My brain just could not come up with that idea. It it did not occur to me. It did not process like it would for, I guess, other people. So, you know what? Fuck that. I'm not getting angry with her about that. I never will. Uh, was there anybody else in the party? Sunburst was here for reasons. I mean, he didn't really do much. Didn't really provide a whole lot of humor. Just a couple lines of exposition, I guess. And I guess... I mean, I like that he was here in the sense that... He was an unnecessary character to the plot. But for character reasons, of course he would be there. He got to know both Maud. And Trixie. And, you know, he's always been there for Starlight. Most, well, he hasn't always been there for Starlight. But he is supposed to be Starlight's friend. So, having him be there makes sense. You know? Like, if he wasn't there, it would be like, wait, why didn't they invite Sunburst? So, you know, just gotta gotta have him there for that. Even if he didn't contribute anything. So, yeah, I mean, it balances out for me with him. Um... We didn't see... We did not see any of the main six at all, did we? Huh. <laughs> I like Starlight's uh, little Magitech bracelet smartwatch thing there. That's... I mean, it's like... It's kind of a what-the-fuck moment when you realize what it is. But at the same time, it's so cool to see that sort of application of magic. Because we we haven't seen that sort of thing enough. Like, we we used to have some small bits of it, like with Tank's propeller, but... We don't see it often enough, even though it makes sense for it to exist. Especially since both Starlight and Twilight have been to the human world. Many times at this point. Seriously. And that one time the human world came to them. Uh. Now, the other thing that I really like about this episode was uh, the return of the treehouse. The sanctuary, as I call it. Because... I mean, quite simply, we saw, we've seen that now three times. Uprooted, She's All Yak, and this one. Um, And twice that it's been used for its more or less intended purpose of the Student Six going there whenever they need help with things. Now, I kind of would have liked to have seen this more from, uh, from Silverstream's perspective, I think, of her having trouble with this and... Starlight not being able to help her because she's busy doing other things and none of the other teachers are able to help her and she's kind of all alone alone with this project and, like, the other students aren't having trouble. They've finished their projects. They've gone home. And so she decides to go out to the treehouse and there she meets Edith. And with Edith's help, she's able to finish up her project. And then whatever something happens, drama, to keep her out there for a little while and you know, cause everybody to come looking for her at the end of the episode or something. I don't freaking know. I'm only coming up with that off the top of my head. I'm not actually writing it. So, I mean, it would have taken a lot more work to actually make it an episode. And obviously, the lesson would have been completely different, most likely. But still, it would have been kind of cool to see. Um, as it stands, though, yeah, I, I love Starlight's just utterly deadpan, uh like, description of the treehouse, because she's, like, like, it's, she's just like, yeah, this was a thing that happened. It happens around here. Weird, magical things just pop out of the ground. 
I don't know. I find it as strange as you do, but I, I live here, so I have to deal with it now. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem like there's too much else to it. I mean, things were all there, the relationships, and relatively small cast. Nice to see, you know, Mod's cave again. Also, just nice to, like, Maud, the way that she acted throughout the episode, we got to see a lot of different sides of her. She really did steal the episode in a lot of ways, because, like, we saw her get almost angry with Terramar for interrupting the party. We saw her make a pun later, feeding into the fact that she's a bit of a stand-up comedian. And then <laughs> her loving side, let's <laughs> say there that. That was great. Um, I mean, there were a couple of different variations there. One that was more actual love, and one that was basically lust. <laughs> um, and we saw her toughness uh, trying to take on the uh, the cockatrices, throwing rock or kicking rocks at them while defending uh, Mudbriar. That was really cool, actually. Yeah, just if I'm gonna put an MV- MVP on this episode, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's Maud. As unexpected as that might be. Because it's a Starlight and Trixie episode. Maud was the best part. She was, she just had so much going on. It was great. Um, Would have liked to have gotten a couple more things out of this episode. But for what it was, it was fine. It was good. I liked it. Wasn't disappointing in any kind of way, really. Uh, Yeah. I wouldn't say it's the best one of the season. By far, it's not. But for what it is, I mean, it's still above the point of no return. And um, I might put it above Uprooted just because I like seeing all of these characters. Um, Just this, this group that we had going on in this episode with Starlight, Trixie, Maud... Like, those three especially were fantastic. And, you know, uh, Silverstream, she's hilarious. So, yeah, I mean, just just a really good general group of characters to have an episode about. And it worked really well. It didn't have any kind of cringy song. It was rather hilarious. So, put it above Uprooted. Um, I mean, I enjoyed it more than She's All Yak. I don't know if it was objectively better, but I mean, that's not really how I judge things, is it? So, on my scale, I'd put it above above, She's All Yacked. Would I put it above any of the others here? Um, I mean, it's definitely not above Frenemies. Or Going to Seed. Hmm, Sweet and Smoky, Common Ground, Twilight 7. Are any of those above this one? Twilight 7, almost certainly. Uh... Common Ground, Sweet and Smoky. Common Ground, Sweet and Smoky. Hmm. Well, Sweet and Smoky had all of the uh, cute Fluttershy faces and whatnot. So, yeah, I think I think we finally have an episode order in terms of uh, in terms of uh, we we've gotten enough episodes now that I can start ranking them and putting them in an order of like. Ones I enjoyed the most, ones I enjoyed the least. Not counting the two-parter at the beginning, because that's in a special class all of its own, as they usually are. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's... Uh, where's where's that document? Mm, not that one. Huh. Okay. Let's... Uh, guess we'll have to make a new one real quick. Okay. <laughs> I mean, why not? That's That's the thing. So... Yeah, we're going to go ahead and say that we're going to put the point of no return at the bottom. Then she's all yak, just because I didn't personally enjoy that one very much. Then uprooted. Then, uh, unfortunately, I mean, a, a very distant point from that common ground. Then this one. Then sweet and smoky. Then twilight seven, I think. And then... Uh, going to seed and frenemies after that. That's that's the order so far, which is a 
Good order. So, uh, a good episode this week. Probably going to be another good episode next week. I really hope so. (laughs) And I really hope to see all of you there whenever either of these episodes come out. Uh, Because I'm a little bit behind on releasing them at the time of this recording. But, uh, yeah. Getting uh, caught up slowly. So, yeah. Stick around. Mm -hmm.